Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about post-processing. So post-processing, as you're probably familiar with in tools like Photoshop, is where you take an image or something that's rendered and then you apply a post-processing effect to it or filters to it. So that's what we're going to do to our entire scene. So rather than just applying shaders to our geometry, we're going to apply a shader, a fragment shader to our entire scene and have it affect the scene. So let's dive in. So if you've been following along with the past tutorials, you're probably familiar with this scene structure. We have our basic scene with a perspective camera. Then we have a couple of lights that we've added and a cube, a sphere, and our plane that makes up the floor. And this is the scene that we're going to apply our post-processing effects onto. So the first thing we need to do in order to apply our post-processing effects is create an effect composer. Now you can find the file for this in 3JS's GitHub repository under the examples in the JavaScript post-processing directory. And the file is called Effect Composer. The other file that we'll need in order to use the Effect Composer is the Copy Shader. And you can find this under the 3JS's examples directory in the JS and then Shaders directory. And it's called Copy Shader. So we can include these two files. We'll also need two other files in order to add effects to our effect composer. We'll need a render pass and a shader pass. And these can be found in the same directory as the effect composer in the examples post-processing directory. So now we go down and we actually create our effect composer. So we do new three effect composer and pass in our renderer. In a bit, we're going to add passes, and these are the actual effects that are going to be applied to our entire scene. But in order for this to all work, we need to update our render loop. So we remove our old render call, and instead we're going to call render on our composer. And this is going to continue to draw our entire scene and all the effects that are being applied. So just rendering our composer doesn't actually do anything. So now we need to add passes to it. So we're actually drawing something on our composer. So our first pass is actually going to be a render pass. And this is going to draw our scene as it was normally through our renderer onto our composer. Render pass takes two parameters, just like the render method on our renderer. So it takes the scene and the camera. Then we add it as a pass onto our composer. And in order to render onto our composer, we need to call render to screen on this pass. And this will make sure that it draws on our composer. So now if we test this, you'll see that we actually get our scene rendering the way it is normally through our composer rather than through our renderer. So now we're going to add our first pass or filter to our entire scene. And 3JS actually has a bunch of shaders that you can use sort of built in to apply as effects like this. And one of those is the sepia tone shader. So you can find this in the same directory as our copy shader in examples, JS shaders, and it's called sepia shader. So we'll add this to our scene and then we're going to add it as a pass. So we create a new shader pass and then we pass in that sepia shader. Then we add it as a pass to our composer. Then we need to make sure that we're adding render to screen on the last pass that we want rendered. So this is going to stack these passes and our first pass is going to be a render pass. And then we're going to get our shader pass, which applies our sepia tone to it. So if we preview this, you'll see we now have the exact same scene we had before, only with this sepia tone applied. 3JS also provides some more complex passes that we can apply to our composers. And one of those is the glitch pass. So in order to use this, we need two files. First, we need the digital glitch JS, which is the shader found in that examples JS shaders directory. Then we need the glitch pass itself, which is found in that post-processing directory in the examples. So now we can go ahead and create another pass, only this is going to be a glitch pass rather than a shader pass. And it takes one parameter, which is the size of our glitch. Then we simply add it to our composer and tell it to render to screen. So now if we run this, you'll see it still has all our other passes applied, our 
render pass and our sepia shader, but it also has our new glitch pass, which is this animated pass that applies a glitch effect on top of it. So you can see how we can really compound different effects by adding them to this composer. So as we can see, this composer is really powerful because it means we can add all these passes to it which apply different effects to our scene. Now, it gets even more powerful when you realize that the shader pass, what we're passing into it is simply a shader, which means that we can write our own effects using GLSL and then pass them in as a shader pass to our composer. So here I have a shader I've written that I can pass into a shader pass. And you'll see it has uniforms, a vertex shader, and a fragment shader. The vertex shader doesn't do anything, it's just normal vertex shader. But it does have these uniforms, and one of them is T diffuse. So this is the texture that's coming from all the previous passes that we've applied. So we can take that texture and then manipulate the pixel values of it in our fragment shader. And that's what we're doing here. So here we're simply adjusting the red and green values to make it a reddish orange effect on our previous passes. So we can create a new shader pass. We can pass in the shader that we created and then we can add that pass to our composer. Then we need to make sure we call render to screen on our last pass, and you can see we now get this reddish orange tint. We can actually animate this as well by updating some of the uniforms that are in our shader. So if we update this in our render call, you can see we can actually manipulate the values and create rich animated visual effects using a composer and shader passes. So that's it for my episode on post-processing. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Thank you.